So let's talk about hybrids. Your first question is probably, what on earth is a hybrid? Well, the best way to answer this question is to give an example. At the University of Reading in Berkshire, there exists a roughly coconut-sized robot capable of navigating a room without bumping into any of the walls. This is easy, you might say. We've been able to build robots like that for decades, and you would be correct. But the interesting and exciting thing about this particular robot is it has no processor. It has various electric parts and pieces, but not a single machine instruction drives this robot. Instead, there's a collection of a few thousand rat neurons nearby stretched over a bunch of electrodes. The neurons develop pathways in response to sensor feedback, and then these pathways transmit different electrical signals via Bluetooth to the robot. So, instead of programming the robot with navigation abilities or programming it with machine learning, they simply wired some neurons to electrodes and provided feedback. Now, the success of an experiment like this has some wider implications. Machine learning has made incredible advances in the past decade and has become an essential tool in almost every industry. But what if we could skip past all the intermediate phases and reach true general purpose AI right now? What if the neural tissue shortcut enables us to make a better artificial intelligence in general? Now, proliferation of high rot technology is naturally an ethical issue, so let's begin with the obvious. Using a biological tissue in robots, especially brain tissue, is very complicated very fast. The rat brain robot has a mere 10,000 neurons compared to a human's 300,000, and is obviously not sentient or deserving of any individual rights. However, the number of neurons used by a robot will doubtlessly increase as the jobs get more complex. So here lies the first muddle. Are hybrids inanimate property, like a rubber ball, or were they afforded the same rights as an animal, like a dog? There's an argument to be made here. Dogs were tools long before they were considered friends or family members. But then, could you be arrested for hybrid abuse? Without a deliberate policy enumeration, which is unlikely if the past has anything to go by, it's likely that the first court case to decide on such matters will set a precedent and will simply proceed from there. A second apparent issue is our typical perception of machines as unflinching engines of consistency would no longer be correct. If you were to buy a rat brain vacuum robot, it would learn to clean your floor differently than every other rat brain vacuum had learned to clean its respective floor. We'd have to be ready to accept that robots have a biological element of cognition and thus make biological mistakes or have inherent biological differences. This creates further issues in terms of liability. Whose fault is it if a hybrid fails? It may have been a faulty rat vacuum, but you also might have been a faulty rat vacuum owner. If the robot's behavior is learned, then perhaps you taught the robot to fail, and thus there was nothing the manufacturer could do to prevent this from happening. Another argument against this sort of technology will also doubtless arise, and it is that we as humans are playing God, and we shouldn't have anything to do with mixing robotics and biology. However, this argument is less about personal morals or consequences and more about the overarching place of humanity within the universe, and as much fun as discussing that would be, I think it's well beyond the scope of a three-minute video.